Hi. Hello. <laughs> hi. So what made you guys decide to do a mermaid show? <laughs> <laughs> Good Only question. <laughs> yes. Um, I, one of my favorite movies is Jaws. And, um, you know, a lot of people think of that as a, a monster movie, but part of what's so great about it is the humanity in it and the portrait of this small town. And I always love that aspect of it and the humor that's in there. And I had also just seen um, the Pirates of the Caribbean movie on Stranger Tides, where they had sort of an interesting new take on mermaids. And I started thinking, oh, we could sort of marry that in sort of a Jaws-type environment. Um, and obviously it's evolved a lot since then, but it's always so fun to like flip a classic mythology on its head and sort of make it our own and take pieces from different aspects of it because it is a global mythology and to sort of build our own version of it has been really exciting. So do you consider the show to be a cross between a bunch of different genres? Like it's got elements of fantasy, it's got elements of science fiction, it has elements of drama. Did you intentionally mean to kind of take things from a bunch of different genres and form it all into one show? Yeah, definitely. And that's, um, I mean, that's to me why Jaws is the classic that it is, you know. Um, I, I think for me the, the most entertaining shows have all of that. I mean, The Sopranos, was, it was really funny at times. And also people could relate to the characters and the family aspect of it. So to me, the, the most interesting shows are always the ones that do a little bit of a mashup of that. For know? this show particularly, I think what we're trying to do is do all of those things, but keep it feeling very grounded. That feeling of, what if this really happened in your town? Right. And so taking all those elements, but continually grounding them yeah. is sort of the goal for us. Yeah. So I actually have a question. What, what made you decide to turn your version of a mermaid away from sort of, you know, the classic idea of what we think of as a mermaid? A little mermaid sort of pretty singing on a beach sort of into a more animalistic kind of predator. What was the decision to take that path instead of you? I mean, I think partly to Emily's point of wanting to keep things as grounded and real as possible, to really look at them as biological creatures. Like, like, what would it look like if this really happened, like she said, and, you know, they say it in the pilot, 95% of the oceans remain unexplored. We don't know what's down there. And just to play that what-if question of, you know, could, could this really happen? And if they were down there, what would they look like to survive? You know, and it starts to bring up a lot of interesting thematic stuff as they come onto land and transform. Um, these ideas of xenophobia, fear of the unknown, I think it, it becomes very rich thematically to play with that stuff. And also, although they are these creatures and dark and dangerous, I think what we're trying to say is that in many ways they're like us. And so they have every side. They're not just sweet, beautiful creatures all the time. Everything is very gray. There's mm -hmm. darkness, there's light and to watch her observe our world and our reaction to her in the world, I think is, is so fascinating. And I think that'll draw people to it. Yeah, I mean, we really see her evolve and take on language and learn. And, um, you know, the Jaws reference, I think, works for the pilot, but then it almost becomes like, well, what if the shark came onto land and started having a relationship with Rhodey? You know, so obviously in a series, we get to just take it so much further and go so much deeper with that stuff, which is really exciting. So did you do any types of research about mythical creatures, creatures in the ocean? Did you focus more on myths? Did you focus more on marine biology? You know, I, th I think it's a little bit of both. We also wanted to have some fun with the pop culture of mermaids because they are so iconic. And, you know, so there's, there's little nods to Splash in there. Um, how, how she takes on language by watching the TV show, the kids cartoon. Um, but no, I, I think we pulled from a lot and then sort of made it our own. I mean, one of the most classic things about mermaids is they typically look like upper half female, bottom half fish. And we sort of subverted that and made a really unified creature that has almost like a shark-like skin to it. And because of digital effects, we're able to create these unbelievable unified creatures that could not be an actor in a, in a prosthetic tail, which is really interesting. Um, but yeah, so we definitely pulled from a lot of different influences and every culture around the world has its own mermaid myth. You know, so she, Emily found this great book that, you know, we, we can pull details from. It tells the story of mermaid myth from every 
corner of the world. And so one of the things that we'd love to do over the course of the series is for people who really do know the mythology of mermaids and are really into it, those stories will be sort of hidden within our stories that they will can recognize them. And other than that, they're just great stories about humanity and the way people relate and all sorts of different emotional lives that we can just tell story about. So I actually have a question about the song that um, Rin sings. Uh, is that sort of, are we saying that, um, I can't remember the main character's name, hit, that ben. he's being, yeah, that, that he's being entranced? Like, is he under her spell now? Or is it more of like he's, like, something, there's something tying, like, how myth mystical sort of It's a big question, and we talk a lot about the siren song, which is so deep in mythology. And, and the mythology has its own definition of, of sirens and siren songs as well. And so we've tried really hard to be clear about the mythology and yet it takes on in our show sort of different aspects so in that moment Eric why don't you can explain in that moment and then where we're going to go yeah I mean it's really a tool they use to, to lure and draw you in and that can be used defensively so in the pilot in the teaser when the merman is trapped in the fish hold she obviously wants to lure out those fishermen presumably to like take care of them right and free herself but then when we see Ben and Rin later in his houseboat after he's picked her up um, it's more of a moment of connection between them and she's obviously wanting to reach out she doesn't have the language yet so that's her one tool that she uses to connect with them so it can be used in different interesting ways yeah, yes. yeah, exactly. So we'll explore them throughout the, the series. The, the mermaid that's captured has one use for the siren song. Obviously, Rin has a different one. And those will all come together in bigger stories as we move forward. And then it becomes a really interesting question, too, of like, am I actually having feelings for this thing? Or is it just the siren song? And trying to unravel that and for Ben to really wrestle with that and understand, like, what is going on? You know, I'm feeling these things. Is it a real feeling of love or is it because of this siren song? Which to me also when we talk about it in the room is a very human thing. Try, people trying to figure out their right. relationships and what they really mean and why am I so intrigued by someone and is it a good thing or a bad thing yeah. in your own life. So. so would you consider would you consider the show to be as much a show about Ben as it is about Rin? Or is it more about Rin? Yeah, I mean... It's an ensemble in a lot of ways. Um, you know, obviously it's a mermaid show, and she's our mermaid. Um, <laughs> she's but there's siren. That's and siren. right. Yes. Right. So you know, I think there's that, but it does feel balanced to me. And you know, that's the beauty of TV is you get to explore a lot of these different lives. Um, and we want to explore not only the relationship with Ben and Rin, but also with Maddie as well. And for that not to look like a typical conventional love triangles to see on TV where two got two women fighting for the affections of a guy to actually have a much more balanced yeah. triangle. I think, Not really telling that story. Yeah. 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 So. Great. Thank cool. You. Awesome have you guys. Have seen the, the siren?